What's up, nature lovers? My name is Brady, and I am finally back out at the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. This is an area where the Great Plains meet this rocky, mountainous landscape, and this refuge is absolutely full of some amazing wildlife. Most famously, Texas Longhorn and American Bison. Although, this refuge is also home to white-tailed deer, elk, bobcats, the occasional mountain lion even, not to mention all the various snake species, lizard species, and birds. However, those are gonna be more active during the summer. We're here right now in November. It's Tuesday right now. Thursday is actually Thanksgiving. So, I'm not sure when this is gonna be uploaded, but while I'm filming it, it's almost Thanksgiving. And for late fall, we could not have asked for more beautiful weather. We had an early start this morning, woke up at five, hit the road at six, and after two and a half hours of driving, we finally made it here in the Wichita Mountains. The drive-in this morning was real foggy and cold, but now that the sun's come out, the weather is beautiful. And this is going to be my first time camping in the Wichita Mountains. We're gonna hike around today, explore by road, see what sorts of amazing wildlife we can find. And tonight we're gonna be camping at the Doris Campground. So I hope you guys stay tuned and join me for this adventure. So I'll stop talking. There's lots of exploring to do. And we only have two days to do it. Upon arriving in the Wichita Mountains, Jackson and I decided to visit the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge Visitor Center in order to develop a more complete picture as to what wildlife we could expect to encounter throughout the refuge. After learning more about the native flora and fauna, we decided to explore the system of hiking trails surrounding Quanah Parker Lake. We made it to this lovely view of Quanah Parker Lake, and back there on the other side of the lake is our campsite. We'll be going over there later today, but right now, we're just gonna explore this area. Jackson and I are gonna try to climb that mountain back there. Apparently it's called Little Baldy. I've seen it, I've heard of it, but I've never climbed it. So we're going to do our best to make it up there. But man, look at these views. Wow, how lovely. this out. Here's a patch of mud right behind me and it is full of bison tracks. They look pretty fresh. This is some really soft wet mud. We're just finding tracks and scat all over this place. So we may have a close encounter with a bison. Well, looks like we took a wrong turn somewhere because the end of our path 
is right here a cliff. So I think we accidentally took the mountain climber's path. So we're gonna have to turn around and see if we can find our way back. I think the actual trail is down there. <laughs> Jackson, what do you reckon? I reckon we go back that way, see if there's another trail. And if there's not, then we go back down there and try the other way. Okay, nice. Let's do it. Well, we were not able to make it to the summit of Little Baldy. Well, that's all right, because we're gonna go to Mount Scott and explore around there. We're gonna drive to the top, check out the sweet views, explore around that area until it's time to book it to camp. As the day grew shorter, we decided to utilize the remaining hours of daylight to explore the summit of Mount Scott, the premier sightseeing destination of the Wichita Mountains. At an elevation of 2,464 feet above sea level, the peak of Mount Scott provides breathtaking views of the Wichita mountain range. And with a three-mile paved road to the summit, these views are easily accessible to hikers, cyclists, and motor vehicle drivers. Upon reaching the summit, Jackson and I began exploring the area in search of wildlife. They shot some film of a Bigfoot there. She walked on two legs, was covered in... No matter how many times I've seen them, the views from atop Mount Scott are always breathtaking. After exploring for a bit at the top of Mount Scott, we came across these lovely piles of elk scat. There's one here, one here, and one farther down. So it looks like there's a small herd of elk right here. I'm surprised to see this many scat piles in this area because so many people come around here. But like we saw when we were hiking the Little Baldy Trail, I'm thinking that these animals, these large animals like elk and bison, come up to these popular areas when the refuge is closed. So at night, early morning, late evening, is probably when you'd be most likely to see one of these animals in these popular areas. Because, of course, that's when all of the people are gonna be gone. Makes sense. So even these more touristy areas are excellent places to come across wildlife and signs of wildlife. Jackson's actually filming a lizard right now, something I was not expecting to see on this trip. Typically reptiles aren't very active in the colder months, but it is a really nice day for November. So he's probably taking advantage of that opportunity, just like we are. So now we're just exploring up here at the higher elevation of Mount Scott, jumping all over these rocks and looking at these little grassy areas for tracks. So we're just gonna keep exploring, see what we can find. As we were preparing to head back down the mountain, we were informed by some sightseers that there was a rattlesnake next to the parking lot. At first, we were skeptical, but upon further investigation, we found ourselves in the presence of a western diamondback rattlesnake. What struck me about this close encounter was how calm the snake was the entire time, just moving through its territory as if we weren't even there. A common misconception that many people have of snakes, especially venomous species like the western diamondback, is that they are always very aggressive and out to bite people. In reality, that couldn't be further from the truth. Most snake bites occur by complete accident, most commonly when a hiker isn't careful and steps on or very near one, 
triggering a defensive response from the snakes. While these snakes can be incredibly dangerous if provoked, as long as you leave them alone and give them plenty of space, they're incredibly docile animals. And this amazing close encounter was confirmation of that fact. If you're interested in learning more about the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake and other wildlife that we encountered on this trip, be sure to check out Jackson's video of this adventure, linked in the description. With the sun continuing its descent toward the horizon, Jackson and I decided it was best to make our way back down the mountain so we could reach our campsite before nightfall. After checking in at the Doris campground, we made it to our site, set up camp, and had some dinner. Our campsite had a beautiful view of Quanah Parker Lake as dusk crept into the refuge, and we even had some pretty amazing animal encounters while enjoying our camp. With the incoming darkness looming over camp, we decided to use what little firewood we had to get a fire going. Welcome to a very cold morning at camp. We woke up at around 6.45 or 7 and it's very cold. So right now we're just getting some breakfast and we're gonna pack up camp and head out for some more exploring. Ah, oh, but it's so cold. It's pretty foggy as well. This morning was absolutely freezing. We were definitely not quite prepared for just how cold it would be the next morning. Nonetheless, we decided that because it was currently too cold and foggy for hiking, we would explore the area and look for wildlife from the warmth of my vehicle. Even with our limited visibility, we were able to spot some of the most iconic species found throughout the refuge, including the American bison the largest terrestrial animal native to North America. Eventually, the fog began to thin, and we decided to use the remainder of our time to explore this beautiful and expansive wilderness on foot. Before long, it was time to wrap up this amazing adventure and make our way back home. Well guys, I think that's going to just about do it for this trip. It was so nice to revisit the Wichita Mountains. 
I used to come to this area all the time and it was so great to be back here. Jackson and I had such a fun time on this trip. This trip was really for Jackson. He's the one that wanted to come out here. And he's been needing an adventure lately. So we decided to come out here during Thanksgiving break uh, and give Jackson that taste of adventure. And I think he really enjoyed it. I think he had a lot of fun. And I did too. So in my eyes, this trip is an absolute success. We saw so much wildlife. We saw bison, longhorn, deer, elk, even a rattlesnake. Basically everything that the Wichita Mountains is known for, we got to see. That's so much fun, so exciting, and I'm so glad I got to see most of the famous species of these mountains on my trip back. So much fun. I can't wait to come back. I don't know when. I'm sure I'll be back at some point. So with that said, we're going to pack up the car and hit the road once again. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.